Hi, if we have not met before, my name is Giovanni. I've been a social science administrator for the past two years working for a nonprofit organization. Most likely you're asking yourself why the change of setting. Well, that's because I'm heading over to a department gathering and I wanted to take advantage of the time and talk to you, share with you what I wish I knew on day one as a Salesforce admin. Before we get started, I do want to say as of September 28, 2024, I became a Salesforce advanced admin, which to me means just having more than basic knowledge in certain areas. But trust me, there's more to learn, especially when you land your first role. So let's dive into what I would do differently on day one as a Salesforce admin. Coming from a non-data background, I had to completely rewire my thinking when dealing with data. It's been a gradual process. Day by day, my brain has been slowly adapting to this new driven data world. Over the past two years, I've built a foundation from hands-on experience, but let me tell you, it wasn't easy at the start. When I first stepped into my Salesforce admin role, I was overwhelmed by the number of people in different roles within the organization. The job didn't come with an outline or step-by-step -step instructions, which is completely understandable, but that was tough for me because my brain thrives on structure and clarity. I quickly realized that I needed to build a framework. I had to take the initiative of breaking down the roles and responsibilities across the org. So we made it on time. I'll have to get back to you guys once we're done. See you in a bit. Okay, we are back. Two hours later and we're back in business. I'm gonna stop by for gas because I'm gonna be driving for 37 miles or one hour and 10 minutes back to Orange County. To do this, I set aside dedicated time to visually map out the different roles in Salesforce. I used Excel to build tables, good notes, and free form on my iPad to break down who was responsible for what. This exercise not only helped me learn how the company is organized, but also helped me see how different teams work together. Trust me, take the time to understand who's in your org will save you countless hours and help you become a more effective Salesforce admin. When I started on day one as a Salesforce admin, I knew what I wanted to accomplish, but I had a long list of tasks I wanted to tackle, but I didn't know what was priority. If you're feeling this way or you ever feel this way, here's my advice. If your organization allows it and doesn't have too many profiles, take the time to understand each one and who it is assigned to. This step might feel time consuming, but it is game changer. Here's why it is important. Profiles and Salesforce control what users can see and do within the system. Understanding the permissions associated with each profile can prevent mistakes, like giving someone access to sensitive data or a user not being able to complete a certain task because they don't have the correct permissions. This traffic is heavy. I keep stopping, I drive five miles per hour, and then it goes to 20, and then I stop, it keeps going. Oh man, it's gonna be a long day here. I still have like 45 minutes to go but I'll keep talking to you. Fortunately, Salesforce now has several tools that makes this process easier. For instance, on the user detail page, there's a handy feature called user access summary. Quick overview of all permissions and access for any user, saving you from clicking through multiple screens to find what you need. Leveraging this feature will save you countless hours and get you up to speed at a faster rate. So take the time early on to learn who is using which profile and what permissions they have. It's a small investment of your time that will pay off significantly in the long run by helping you manage your org more efficiently. Picture this, a user from department A reached out because they couldn't access records from department B. Records that were supposed to be shared between these two teams. The issue, we had not set up proper sharing rules. Another example in our organization, we have specific rules. The A team can only access their text messages and the C team can access everybody else's messages across the departments. This setup helps us maintain data privacy where needed while still allowing broader access for teams that require it. Learn your business processes and stages if applicable. Our organization has client program processes that includes multiple stages. When I first joined, all these stages and requirements clients had to complete to move forward to the next stage. It took some time to understand waiting in line to get a car wash. So 
let's get back to it. Different rules apply to returning clients depending on their exit dates. If they are reactivated, there's a certain process they follow. If they have to start the program all over, it's a different process. Now, I'm able to explain things a bit better because I've spent time hammering myself all this information being said. But every day I'm learning something new in my role as a Salesforce admin. And let me tell you, it has been a rewarding place to be. Now I'm able to explain things a bit better because I spent time hammering myself all this information being said. But every day I learn something new as a Salesforce admin. And let me tell you, it's been a rewarding place to be. Look at this magical experience, so colorful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did creating it. I appreciate you for sticking along in the video. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you. Leave a comment down below. Uh, I'll probably post next year again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.